Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim and this is a continuation of my Skies Above Britain playthrough. We are in the middle of chapter one of our campaign getting ready to start patrol number two. So if you recall from last episode we had uh, Two of our pilots that had to bail out, so they had to sit this patrol out. Uh, we have uh, Lloyd that's in the hospital. I've uh, reassigned uh, pilots to our planes. And I wanted to try to get as many of them back out uh, as I could without risking having to send fatigued pilots out for the third patrol. Uh, once, if you run... Uh, a pilot uh, two consecutive missions or patrols then they become fatigued and if you send them out then on that third consecutive mission they have some uh, detrimental effects for being fatigued uh, but I think I've got it so that uh, after this patrol I'll only have seven pilots that will have uh, done two patrols in a row and so we'll be able to switch those out for these five that are sitting out now, plus the two that had to bail out that will be available for patrol three. In fact, we can go ahead and move them over here now. <coughs> so we've got seven that can come in to replace those seven that are uh, going to be running back-to-back -back patrols. And hopefully we'll get Lloyd back too, but I wanted to make sure just in case we didn't get Lloyd back that we'd still be able to run a uh, full squadron with no fatigued pilots. Or hopefully, I guess. It depends on if, if some of these can't come back, then we may end up having to run fatigued pilots, but I guess we'll see. But we'll try to minimize that as much as possible. All right, since we have our pilots assigned, I think we can go ahead and check the status of Lloyd, see if he makes it out of the hospital or not. So as you can see on the table here, uh, if we get a one to three, he's discharged, which means he's out of the RAF. We'll have to get a replacement for him. Otherwise, four to eight, uh, he remains hospitalized. Nine to 12, he returns to duty. We got a six, so he's going to stay in the hospital a bit longer. All right, let's go ahead and next we will roll for our uh, random event. So again, we're using the chapter one table up here. Time we got 10, bumpy landing. Oh boy, let's see what that's all about. Bumpy landing, at the end of this patrol, select a green pilot at random. We already have one, or we only have one. So it'll be Bailey not in the hospital or in the bailout box. So I guess if he's in the hospital or in the bailout box, we'll just ignore this. Uh, the selected pilot crashes on landing, place him in the hospital. Oh, no, I guess we won't. If no green pilot, roll a die and select a pilot at random. So somebody's gonna end up in the hospital after this patrol. Oh, I did wanna mention too, uh, there was a couple of, uh, well, one mistake and one blunder that I made in the previous episode. I noted it in the uh, in the video. I added some text overlay to point it out. But uh, my huge blunder was uh, when we tried to intercept the uh, bomber formation, I completely forgot that uh, you can spend a fuel to uh, re-roll that. 
So remember we were rolling two dice trying to get a 10 or higher and we got an eight and I was so discouraged by that that I completely forgot. And I definitely should have spent a fuel to re-roll that and things would have probably turned out a whole lot better than they did. But that was a mistake on my part that I'll just have to live with. Uh, then the other actual rules mistake, and I alluded to it uh, later on in the video that uh, in one of the dogfight example, or one of the dogfights uh, I had, I had a section that was uh, head on, had some head on fi uh, fighters and some ones that were tailing them. <coughs> and after resolving the head on result, I went ahead and did the hit check on Childers, who got sent to the fate box. When in reality, he should have stayed around until I resolved the tailed uh, card, uh, which would have meant no maneuver would have been possible. And I actually did an evade because I thought there were no hit markers, but there should have been. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize, well, I didn't go back and check it until after the we completed the patrol, so it was really too late to try to rectify it. So we'll just... Uh, pretend that things would have still come out the same <laughs> but I did want to point that out for anyone watching uh, so you don't get the idea that that was okay it was in fact wrong all right and like I've said before uh, if you do spot any other mistakes that I don't point out uh, feel free to mention them in the comments because I want to make sure people that watch this afterwards don't learn things incorrectly. All right, so let's go ahead and get going here. We need to set up our uh, patrol. So we need to find out. I already got the, uh, reshuffled the vector markers and managed to get them going all different directions here, it looks like. Let's fix that. And uh, so that's all done. We still need to roll to see where our squadron starts. So 1 to 5, 6 to 11, or 12. We got a 12 last time, which was great, but then, well, you know what happened if you watched. Whoops, that's the tower. Let me reel that. Uh, 3 this time. So we're going to be way back in the deep. Deep zone. So where is my squadron marker? Here it is. Um, and then we need to roll for our starting visibility. So again, red die will be the visibility, and then if necessary, blue die will tell us where the sun is. This is tower here. Uh, so nine. Is going to be haze no sun. So we don't need to worry about the second die. So haze no sun. Just leave the sun marker here in case we need it later, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so that's it for setup. So let's jump right into our sequence of play. Starting with the raid vector sequence reveal. Okay, right off the bat, raid result. So that means the raid marker comes down. Then we have a flak result of one. We'll draw one of these to put on the formation once we discover them. Actually, do we discover them now? Let me check that. Uh, what is it when we make contact? 
there's no raid marker, uh, place it in the vector marker space. Then if visibility is clear, roll a die to place escort station markers. Well, it's not, it's haze right now. Uh, if haze or clouds, place the raid marker, but defer rolling a die for escort markers until contact happens. Okay, yeah, and we don't place the bombers out until contact happens. We'll just put a flak marker, a damage marker, to be applied later. And it's going to be a fuselage. And then we'll roll to see if it's catastrophic once we see who gets it. And then uh, we have the option to uh, tally-ho. So unfortunately, we are not in an adjacent zone to the raid marker, so we can't use the tally-ho to make contact. Uh, however, we can. Tally ho. We can spend a fuel to move the squadron formation marker to an adjacent station or change altitude, but not both. So I think we will go ahead and do that to move to the, what's this one called? The middle zone. So we'll spend the fuel for that. And that resolves that marker. Let's see what this one is. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> okay, this is that. Uh, we talked about this option last time. So we will have a tally-ho option after this, after we resolve the flak uh, that we could use to make contact and then uh, uh, we'd we'd be able to catch them before they drop their bombs because then this will get delayed until uh, the interception sequence. Hello there, future Tim here. Uh, I realized after completing this patrol that I made a critical mistake at this point that completely invalidated the rest of the patrol that I did. Uh, which was unfortunate because I had some really great results. Uh, but as some of you may have already guessed, uh, when I said that I could use the uh, tally-ho opportunity here off of the flak result to contact the uh, bomber formation, that was incorrect because in order to do that, uh, you have to be in a high position. Uh, and I am not in a high position at this point. Uh, I'm in a low position. So the best we could do with that tally-ho is either move over to here or go to high and stay in the middle. Um, so yeah, what should have actually happened is the raid result would have happened at this point prior to me contacting uh, the raid and therefore I wouldn't have gotten any victory points from isolating bombers. So I am going to uh, replay this uh, patrol uh, starting from this point uh, but for your viewing pleasure I'm going to continue uh, I'm going to go ahead and post the, the this uh, first take we'll call it on uh, patrol two, uh, just so you can see how things would have played out if this had been a legal move. Uh, for example, say we had started middle instead of high, then when we got the first uh, raid result or uh, flak result, we could have used tally ho to go high at that point. And then when this one came up, we would have been able to do exactly what I ended up doing. Uh, but everything from this point on that you're going to see should not have happened. But again, it was such a great success of a patrol that I wanted to let you see it so you can see how things do go uh, once everything goes in your favor. So 
hopefully we can at least make something out of this in the replay. But in the meantime, uh, enjoy the rest of this invalidated uh, patrol. Now back to present day Tim. So I think we want to go ahead and try that. Let's get our two flak markers first. Another fuselage 10 with catastrophic results. And a wing. All right, so we are going to use this tally ho option to spend the fuel and make contact. So we need our contact chart or table. Those are not on any player aid it doesn't look like unfortunately oh yeah here it is it's on the sequence of play it's hiding uh so we are in an adjacent zone which means we have to yet again spend a fuel and then we'll roll uh it's not clouds so we don't get the minus two to our roll and we're hoping for a big number because we don't want to be coming in on the tail or trailing if possible. 11, there we go. So we're going to be coming in nose low. We can spend a fuel to come in nose high instead. Which let's see if that's worth it. I'm thinking it probably is. If I can find the interception charts. Here we go. So our choices are going to be nose high or nose low. Um, we don't know where the escorts are yet, but the thing with nose low is we're going to have to spend the fuel anyway when we make our uh, interception check and we have to ignore disruption results on the first round. Uh, plus all of our uh, intercept target numbers are going to be lower if we're coming in from high. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and spend that fuel to uh, adjust from nose low to nose high. So we get to put our squadron marker on the interception map now in the nose high position all right and that immediately ends the raid vector sequence and we go straight to the interception sequence uh, also, this is when uh, we made contact, so we're supposed to place the bombers, <coughs> excuse me, and place our escorts. So let's do the escorts first. Um, we need to roll on the escort table for chapter one. So again, we're looking for a high number here. And good. So that's going to be trailing 109's heavy. So 109's in the trailing position and they're heavy. Trailing station. So if we look back at our interception chart again for nose high. Uh, escorts in the uh, trailing 
not going to be much of a problem. We just need to get a three or higher. Now we won't have our out of the sun advantage this time, so we won't be able to roll two dice, but I will remember to use the fuel to re-roll uh, if we miss it the first time. All right, now let's see what our bombers look like. So red die will be the bomber type, blue die will be their formation. And we got an 11 and an eight. So consulting the situation manual again. As soon as I figure out where I put it. Uh, rule book, oh here it is. <clears throat> I think I might make uh, player aid cards for these chapters with like this on the front, this on the back, so we don't have to keep flipping into the rule or in the scenario book for this. Okay, so we got 11 for the uh, bomber type, so it's going to be Heinkel's, and we got 8 for the formation, which will once again be our seven tile V formation, just like we had last time with the Junkers. All right, so I'll get that set up and be right back. All right, we've got our bomber formation set up. So we can now go into the interception phase, starting with the orders. <clears throat> so I'm thinking, since we don't have, uh, so here's what I'm thinking. So we're going to have to resolve the rest of that uh, raid marker or vector marker that we revealed before when we get to the uh, raid vector segment or uh, step of the patrol complete phase. So we're only going to get, uh, we'll get our Assuming we successfully intercept, we'll get one round of attack here and we'll get a second round of attack here. Uh, so we're going to, only going to have two attack rounds before they drop their bombs and isolating bombers won't count for um, victory points. So I'm thinking we want to send all of our fighters into the bomber formation and just ignore the escorts for this uh, since time is a real factor here. We want to capitalize on that as much as we can. And given that uh, even with the escorts, uh, we only have to roll a three or higher to intercept, I think I'm good with just ignoring them. So we're going to give a bomber's order to the entire squadron. So for the intercept phase, we skip escort, we go straight to bombers and we see if we successfully intercept them. And again, I'm just reminding myself again, re-roll by spending a fuel. So we are nose high. We have 109 escorts in the trailing position. So we need a three or higher to successfully intercept. Got it. All right. So our formation marker comes off the interception map. All of our fighters enter the bomber formation area. And we are approaching from the nose. So let's see how we want to do this. We want to maximize our isolation opportunities. However, before I go any farther, we need we got these three uh, damage from flak that we need to assign. Uh, 
So if you remember, it's the largest contiguous block, which is everyone, and then only one marker per tile, and you prioritize ones that have the fewest markers on them. None of them have any. So for our first marker, we will go uh, one through seven around the V here. So nine's too big. Four, there we go. So that's going to be the lead Keta. And then it will be bomber number five will be the middle one. So that was our fuselage 10. So now we need to roll to see if that is a catastrophic hit. And it is. So that bomber is destroyed. Does not count for us though. All right, and then we have another, uh, we'll do the wing next. So now we're just down to these six because that one has a marker on it now. So we'll do the divide by two thing. Three, so one, two, three, four, it'll be this one. And it is, nine is gonna be the uh, one, two, three, four, one through four, five through nine, right? No. One through four, five through eight, nine through twelve. So it'll be this bomber with the wing damage on it. And then uh, we've just got five left now. So again, divide by two, but ignore 11 or 12. Seven. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoops. And number seven will be the one in the lead. And then we see if that is catastrophic. And it is not. All right, so now we can assign our fighters. I'm very glad those two ended up getting the damage because those are two of the weak points for uh, isolating. Because <coughs> we isolate these two, we actually isolate four. Uh, so we're definitely going to focus on those, I think, and then probably uh, the lead one since it has a destroyed marker on it. So let's do, and then who's our green guy? Uh, red 2 is uh, Bailey. Um, so we'll send Bailey and... Let's do it like, do we just want to focus on, I think maybe the, for the first round we just send all of them after, uh, no, I want to do at least a couple I think up here and we'll do that first so that all these guys count toward it. And then that way it'll only break a couple of them off then. So why don't we send uh, a couple of the yellow guys there. We'll send, uh, let's go after this one that's already damaged with a couple. Go after that one that's already damaged with a couple. And then we'll send three after this one. Okay. I like that. Let's get our medium bomber deck again. So we got Heinkels. It's kind of hoping for Stukas, but feeling much better about this patrol than the last one. <laughs> All right, and we're coming in nose high, so we don't have to ignore the uh, disruption results in the first round, like you would if you were nose low. All right, so we're gonna start over here with yellow two. So full uh, supported Keta 
Uh, coming in from the nose. Oh, wow. Only needed three to disrupt. So it's definitely disrupted. And we get a damage and return fire. Damage is going to be a wing, catastrophic on an 11. Nope. And then our return fire. Is a hit, elevator eight. Slide him over to there. Now let's see if we can get this guy to drop out of the Keta. I'm going to leave us with two isolated bombers. Uh, so next is a yellow three. Now we've got an isolated tile. Uh, so he's jammed. We might as well do the collision check first because then neither of these will matter if they collide. <laughs> So collision check. Ooh. And then uh, jammed guns. But there are three or more things on the tile. So they will fall out of formation. Which means these are also falling out of formation. And this whole tile gets replaced by... Two lone bombers. All right, but we want to mark that we have isolated uh, one Keta for victory points. Got that marked there. I'm just going to use tally marks for these instead of uh, writing in the numbers so we can keep track as we go. <clears throat> All right, so far so good. Let's see how the rest of this goes. Uh, let's do um, red two next. We're back on the top row, nose, uh, 10 or more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So they do uh, disrupt, and we get a damage and a return fire. So that's going to be here and here. So that's two more victory points for isolated Kettas. And we get a damage. Wing. And return fire. A hit five on the fuselage. guy over here out of the way. All right, red leader. Now an isolated tile on the nose. Uh, there are four markers and or fighters on this tile, so they will distress, drop out of formation. We get another hit and return fire. So let's uh, drop them out. I need to get some more uh, isolated markers for these guys, or lone bombers, I should say. So let's do this. Let's slide him all the way over there. And this will get a fallen marker. And 
this damage will go on to him. So he falls out, takes another damage. Whoops, wrong bolt. Uh, it's a wing, possibly catastrophic. Let's see if it is. No. And then return fire. Is a hit. Cockpit seven. Then we have red three coming in. Uh, isolated bomber now on the nose. Uh, damage and low ammo. Damage is an engine. They've already fallen. <clears throat> and then low ammo. Alright, now we've got a yellow leader. Uh, isolated Keta coming in on the nose. Not a green pilot, so ignore that. Low ammo, and look at that. Only needed two to distress it. So that's uh, two more lone bombers. So let's give him his low ammo. And then this becomes that. And this tile can go away. And get replaced by another lone bomber. Doing a great job breaking these guys up. All right. Uh, that was, yeah, that was yellow. Yellow leader. Now we've got uh, blue two. Lone bomber on the nose. Collision check. Nope. And then damage and low ammo. On cockpit engine. He's already fallen out. But one more engine will take him out. All right, great. Now let's see if we can isolate two more Ketas up here. <clears throat> uh, let's do uh, blue three next. So it's a supported Keta from the nose. Yes, disrupt on a five. We've got six plus a seventh from the damage. It's a low ammo. Isolate, which isolates two more. Just two more victory points, up to five already. <laughs> this is what we needed to make up for the last patrol. Uh, and then the damage results. Fuselage. Uh, blue leader. Uh, isolated Keta on the nose. No... Or he's not a uh, green pilot. Who is our green pilot? Red. Red three, right? I hope I didn't mess that up. Yeah, he's over here. He was the first one to go. Pretty sure he didn't get a, or not the first one, but the first one down there. 
I don't think he got a green result. Um, where are we at? Here, right? Yeah, low ammo and then three to uh, drop him out so he will distress. So low ammo. And yet another lone bomber. Just set him back here. This two damage on him. And another fallen marker here. We'll just stack those guys. All right. Uh, green leader. Uh, we're an isolated, going head on. Uh, definitely have. Oh, these guys should actually be down here now on that bomber. Uh, so no, we don't have uh, the five, just four. Uh, return fire and low ammo, that was kind of unproductive. <clears throat> return fire. Hit engine five. Then uh, green two. Uh, isolated Keta from the nose. There we go. Only need two. Uh, uh, but he goes low ammo. Uh, green two does not have a green pilot, so it's just the low ammo and distress. So two more lone bombers. We're gonna have enough. <laughs> And last but not least, green three. Lone bomber now on the nose and he gets the damage. Let's see that cockpit shot now. Wing. Great job breaking them up. Now we got to see if we can shoot some of them down. We still got these two that could potentially be isolated, so we'll probably go for that in the next round with some of them <clears throat> and then try to finish off some of these damaged bombers. All right, but first we need to finish this bomber cycle. So everyone disengages. Got some hit checks to do. <clears throat> All right, so let's start here with uh, yellow two, which is Timmons. He got hit on the elevator. Let's see if it was trivial. Need an eight or higher. Yes. And then green leader, uh, which is Dean, has an engine five. And that is trivial. Uh, red two which is Jap, uh, has a 
fuselage five. Also trivial. And our last one is Red Leader, uh, which is Ellsworth. Has a cockpit seven. Yes. Nice. All trivial. Perfect. All right. So that will conclude the bomber cycle. So we resume uh, from the interception sequence. So we resume the interception sequence. We came in there from here. Uh, so we go to cruise. We don't have any with cruise orders. So we go into the entropy phase and right back into the bomber formation. So approach step. Uh, we could try sending some guys on the tail, but we don't have anyone with, uh, that the tail gunner has been knocked out. So that's probably not wise. I think we'll just stick with, uh, flank approaches. So we want to prioritize, I think, these three. And then we want to send some after this Keta here to try to isolate these two. Um, probably, hmm, let's do, just send one guy there. We want to send at least one there a couple here, a couple here. How many does that leave? That leaves seven. If we send everybody with a backup, that would leave four to go after this. And I'm not sure for starboard. Just look at what we've seen already. I mean, there is one there that's only four. But I think generally you need higher numbers to disrupt from the starboard. Uh, so yeah, I think we'll just go with this and hope that nobody misses. If they do, we've always got future rounds to finish them off in. I think we definitely want to get these isolated for two points two more points before they uh, get a chance to uh, drop their bombs. Because after this round, they will be dropping their bombs. So this is our last opportunity to get uh, victory points from isolated Kettas. So I'm wondering if maybe we want to send even more than seven. I mean, we should get some markers accumulate here too to help us out. So... I think we'll be all right. Famous last words, right? <clears throat> okay, so that'll be our approach. Uh, we'll go ahead and start up here. Uh, green two, going after the lead bomber in this Keta. Hey, look at that, we got a nice one. Only needs six. And he takes out the uh, dorsal gunner. <clears throat> And he does take return fire, but six. We got plenty to isolate those. So that's two more victory points. Maximum victory points from Keta Isolation. Now let's see how many we can down. Let's not forget his return fire. It is a hit, cockpit seven. Green three. Isolated Keta now from starboard. Uh, return fire and that bomber falls out of formation from a distress. I think we're gonna 
run out. It may be out <laughs> of uh, isolated ones. Yes, we are. So what we're going to have to do is bring back uh, one of these and just put two fallen markers on it. So that'll represent this one. And that'll free up this marker to go here. Mark him as fallen. All right, that, uh, we still got to do return fire on green three. It is a hit and it's a cockpit eight. And they're getting cockpit hits on us. I want to get cockpit hits on them. <clears throat> Okay, yellow two, uh, isolated bomber from the starboard report. Uh, yellow two is not a green pilot, so uh, damage and low ammo. At least our low ammo results are getting spread out. I haven't had anyone run out yet. I wish we haven't done any of these yet. <laughs> And we got an engine, but he's already fallen out. Okay. Then we have Red Leader. Lone Bomber from Starboard. Another hit or damage and low ammo. Hey, look at that. Two engine results. That bomber is destroyed. And that was by Red Leader, which is Ellsworth. So Ellsworth gets credit for a bomber kill. We took away a escort kill from him last patrol because we had our pilots kind of backwards on the display. But he makes up for it with the bomber kill. This this patrol, so that's another victory point. <clears throat> Those will go back in the cut. And, yeah, that was the last one going against that bomber, okay. All right, so let's see what we can do against this one. Uh, yellow three with jammed guns. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, isolated tile from starboard. Uh, damage, low ammo, and four, which will be enough to knock them out of formation. <clears throat> so, well... Yeah, it's going to be enough to knock him out. we got to see whether the damage actually gets through, though, because his guns are jammed. So even it goes through, it goes through. So we get the damage. Engine, well, it's falling out anyway. Well, that'll be this guy. And that makes that one a lone bomber now, too, but we don't have enough markers to show it. All right, let's just put him up there with all these other ones that we're kind of ignoring for the time being. 
All right, and then he gets a low ammo. And we've got blue three coming in next. Lone bomber, starboard report. Damage and low ammo. So he's out. And another engine damage here would be perfect. Wing. And then blue leader. Lone bomber starboard hits the dorsal gunner. And runs out of ammo. All right, sliding over here. See if we can finish these guys off. <clears throat> Blue two. Uh, green. Uh, nope, not a green pilot. So damage and low ammo. So he's out. And again, a second damage here would be ideal. Or second engine damage, I should say. And it is. Look at that. Nice. So who was that masked man? Blue 2 is Grigsby on his first patrol. That was a bomber. Another victory point. We're up to nine now. That bomber's destroyed. Uh, green leader still has to draw a card. Uh, he does take return fire and runs out of ammo. Hit elevator eight. Okay. <clears throat> go all the way through this bomber deck just on the first two rounds here. Uh, yellow somebody, leader, trying to finish off this badly damaged bomber here. And he does get a damage result, so that will kill it. And he's out of ammo. For fun, we'll see where he hit it. Another wing damage. So that's four damage on that bomber. So yellow leader, who is uh, Ox Spring, has a bomber kill to go along with his two escort kills he had uh, in the first patrol. Which is a 10 victory points. We can go ahead and get rid of these now since we got a couple of extra lone bomber tiles now. See if we can finish this one off. Red three moving in. We're gonna have just enough bomber cards. Yep, look at that. 
damage and nothing else. Like to see those. And it's a fuselage hit. And then red two for the kill. Yes. And low ammo. He puts a another engine damage on him. I shouldn't say another un engine damage, but that's his fourth. So yeah, uh, red two. Uh, which is Jap gets a bomber kill. He had an escort kill in the first patrol. And that's another victory point. Up to 11. All right. Much better. <laughs> much, much better. Much more fun than the last one. All right, everyone disengages. And we have some hit checks to do. Just a couple, uh, well, three this time. So green three, which is uh, Alan, has a hit on the cockpit. Needs an eight or higher. No. He goes to the cockpit fate box. That one's a little harder to land. Needs a 10 through 12 for that. Uh, I'm just going to leave the pilots over here uh, until the end of the patrol. It gets a little too cluttered, I think, putting them over there. All right, next we have... Green too. Wow, it's all green section that took these hits. We could lose that whole section here. Uh, cockpit seven. Ooh. Nope. And then green leader with an elevator eight. Okay, good. <clears throat> that will conclude the bomber segment. So we resume back to the entropy phase. Now we have escort reaction. Now they're looking for some payback. Uh, it's not clouds, so we ignore that. No ambush, that's good. Uh, and the only station is in trailing, so nothing happens there. Uh, a head station would move to port, but there isn't one. So, yeah. Nothing. Excellent. That will take us to chase. No one has lost contact, so we can skip that. Control complete, no. Fuel. Everyone burns another fuel. Um, no escort recovery because they weren't uh, suppressed. Uh, escort exit. Uh, there is no check for escort exits in the uh, first spot, so they're not going anywhere. Uh, don't need to worry about channel patrol and uh, no one's lost contact, so no one to reform. Uh, so we go back to the raid vector. So now we would uh, resolve the other part of this uh, 
one that we drew before. <clears throat> and so now they have dropped their bombs. And I think that's the only thing that happens with that. Oh, no, we uh, remove all inbound vector markers from the track. So all these come off. Uh, da, 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 da. Move the raid marker to the turn space. So they're making their turn back toward home. And if the sun were out, uh, we would roll to see uh, a new sun position. But it is not, so we don't. And now we can go ahead and set up our outbound uh, vector markers. Let's give them a quick little shuffle here. We'll get one there. Uh, one here. And one there. All right. <clears throat> So that is it, I believe, for the uh, raid vector. So I assume we don't. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure of, since that raid vector marker was actually from the previous, from the raid vector sequence. Do we like finish resolving that and then do the normal uh, oops, uh, reveal step? That's the only thing I'm not completely sure about. I don't know if the rules are going to clarify that or not. All right, so I'm still not 100% sure on this. I'll probably end up asking about it on Board Game Geek, but I think what happens is this would have stayed uh, in this spot when the raid marker was here. So when you begin the raid vector sequence, it says reveal and resolve markers in the space with the raid marker. Yeah, in the space with the raid marker. Um, so this would have still been in the space, so we would finish resolving this which ends up moving it to here, but then we don't then move it again because it was in a space without a raid marker, a vector marker. So that's the way I'm gonna play it anyway. If you think that's wrong, let me know. And like I said, I'll probably try to get clarification on Board Game Geek, but that's what we're gonna go with. <clears throat> All right. So continuing from there, we swirl again. Uh, so no one's on the interception map, so we skip orders and intercept. We go to entropy, so we're back in the bomber formation. All right, so everyone that's no ammo, uh, I'm going to go ahead and have RTB. So that will be blue three. Green leader, yellow leader, uh, blue two, and blue leader. So they're all over there on the RTB track underneath their fuel marker. Um, we still have anybody from, who do we still have left out here? Just red and yellow. So we can get rid of blue and green's fuel markers. Won't be needed anymore. And let's see if we can uh, finish off some more here for a couple more victory points. We definitely wanna go after this guy and possibly these two. Uh, the 
right, we've only got four guys and one's jammed. Uh, so I think we'll just concentrate on finishing this one off and then trying to finish this one off. Um, do I want to send a backup here just in case? I think so. Maybe we have the backup B on the guy that's jammed. So we'll do a jammed and a low ammo there and send three low ammos here. So we have a chance of getting them both, but at least, hopefully at least one. All right, I need to reshuffle the bomber deck because we went through it last time. what that whole formation we managed to whittle them down to just this after two rounds okay let's start with our jammed pilot there so lone bomber starboard report damage and low ammo so he's out let's see if the damage actually goes through need an even no so jam marker comes off but he's out of ammo now and did not cause any damage so let's see if his backup and finish it off. Yes. Damage. Low ammo, which puts him at no ammo. And that's the fourth damage on that one. Which was a wing damage. And yellow two. Piloted by Timmins, gets the credit for that kill. And that's five bombers destroyed. All right, now hopefully these three can finish this one off got a damage and low ammo so he's out and causes a damage just get a cockpit here so we don't have to worry about it wing <clears throat> Tail gunner runs out of ammo and return fire. Uh, lost contact. Comes lost contact. We'll just set him over here off to the side. Whoops, we'll pile. and then moment of truth. Oh no, we didn't get him. Green pilot uh, takes damage, but red, oh, actually maybe that is, is that red three? Yes, that is Bailey. So he will take a hit. And that's not return fire, that's just a hit hit. So 
cockpit seven. Well, he was our last chance of finishing that guy off. We'll see if he can stick around one more round and finish the job. Uh, so everyone's going to disengage. He's lost contact, so he's not in the bomber formation anymore. And we need to do a hit check for Bailey. Seven or higher. Yes. Trivial. So he will get to try again. Unless he gets taken out by escorts. All right, so that concludes the uh, bomber cycle. We go back to escort reaction. Maybe we can get lucky again. Nope, so no t clouds. There will be an ambush though. And uh, no, that's not for the trailing, that's for the ambush. So no reaction from the trailing section. Uh, 109's in a head would get reduced if there were any, and low would move to high. But those are both empty. So the only thing we have is an ambush uh, from 109s. And let me check. They may go after lost contact first. I don't remember. Entropy, escort reaction. Ambush. Uh, apply it to a section that has lost contact. If there isn't a section that has lost contact, apply it to an independent RAF fighter that has lost contact. Perfect. Uh, the Luftwaffe is 109 or 110 as indicated by the car. Okay, so they're actually going to go after Red 2. Um, and it's a 109. 109s. So we'll draw a Luftwaffe Advantage card. Uh, tailed, they're not 110. So tailed by a swarm of 109s. Let's uh, do this. right here. It's not actually in the bomber formation, but we're going to do it here. Um, so he's got no ammo, so no reason to try to do anything fancy here. He's just going to evade. And see if we can get away with nothing happening to us. Uh, well, yeah, it looks like we can choose this one. He's not, this is a red two, which is Jap, so he's not green. So we'll choose this result. He gets a reduction and then an automatic reduction from the evade. Means there's just a rota on his tail now. We'll leave that there because he's going to evade again. All right, well, vanish and hit, or hit and vanish. <laughs> so they are gone, but he gets a hit. Mm, ooh, ouch, elevator 10. Let's see if that's trivial. Ooh, it is. Perfect. We'll go back to his lost contact area. <clears throat> All right. That was escort reaction. Takes us to uh, chase. So now we can have... Uh, Red 2 RTB, join the other pile there. And 
And patrol complete. No. So fuel. Just red and yellow sections left out. Uh, there's no escort recovery. Uh, escort exit. Uh, I believe there is a check for that now. Yes, on a 10. Nope. Then no channel patrol yet. No one to reform. Raid vector. So move the raid marker to here and resolve this, which is flak. And now since we have fighters in the uh, bomber formation, uh, one of them will also take a hit. Let's draw a hit for the uh, and unfortunately it, well fortunately actually it can't go on that one. It's going to be on one of the tiles I assume a Keta first uh, with no markers on it. So it's an 11 uh, fuselage uh, so we'll do one through four, five through eight. So it's ten. So it's this one. And which bomber is it? Six is going to be the lead bomber. And then we see if it is destroyed. And it isn't. Okay. Then one of our fighters has to take uh, flak. So one to three, four to six, etc. Eleven. It's going to be uh, yellow three. And then I think we uh, do the hit check for that immediately. Let me double check. So fuselage ten. Uh, let's see. Where does it talk about friendly fire? Uh, if an RAF fighter is in the bomber formation, place an equal number of hit markers randomly on RAF fighters there, but no more than one per marker per fighter. Perform hit checks. So he needs a 10 or higher. For that to be trivial, and it is. Excellent. Man, we're getting great rolls on these hit checks. <clears throat> All right. So that will be... The end of the raid vector step. We swirl again. Skip, skip. Uh, entropy. Uh, so these three will RTB. Because they're out of ammo. <clears throat> and we'll take another one last shot at... Well, maybe not last. At uh, this guy. There it is. Out of ammo. Fourth hit. It was a wing hit. And that was red three, which is Bailey. Our green pilot shakes off that hit and gets a bomber kill. That's two bombers he killed. So that's another victory point. Looking at 13 victory points. That's awesome. <clears throat> All right, let's see if he survives the escort reaction yeah he didn't take return fire or anything so he disengages that ends the bomber cycle now we have escort reaction uh, wow no ambush nothing comes from trailing 
So yeah, nothing there. That puts us to chase. There's no one lost contact. So we go to patrol complete. Uh, no. <clears throat> I don't think you can just declare it complete. I think you have to have everyone RTB or in fake boxes. Let me confirm that. I've seen some people online do that, and I don't think that's right. I think you have to still spend the fuel. and I mean, nothing else is going to happen, so technically I guess you could, but it could matter depending on, like, if it, it was going to put your fuel into uh, low, empty, or vapor, then it could matter. complete. If all RAF fighters are on the RTB track or in fate boxes, the patrol ends. Yeah, so it's not over yet. Not until the fat lady sings. Uh, so we got to push our fuel cubes. It's just uh, red now, actually. Yellow's all back. So red cube goes there. Uh, no escort recovery. Check to see if the escorts exit. This time they exit on a 10. And if there are any 110s, they would exit on an 11. We do possibly have channel patrol this time, though. So there's that. And also, I think we might be subject to uh, channel recovery if we have to bail out. Uh, 11, so yeah. The escort reduces to light. Uh, channel patrol, yes. There's a green number in this box, so 10 or higher. We'll have escorts from the channel patrol. No. Uh, nothing to do during reform, uh, raid vector, so this moves, resolve this, Messerschmitts, so we're going to get, have to tangle with them, uh, Messerschmitts is always 109s. And uh, select a section at random. Otherwise, if there aren't any, select a fighter at random. Well, our random one and only fighter is our green Bailey. Uh, they're not 110, so ignore that. Tailed by a swarm. Oh, boy. He is obviously going to evade. Draw two tailed cards. And it's either a hit or hit and reduce. So we will hit and reduce. And then they get an automatic reduce because of us evading. Hit marker is a wing seven. So we'll do that hit check. Ooh, fate box. And because the raid marker is in a spot with this uh, channel bailout, uh, he will have to check for that if he does indeed bail out. Um, so that was a wing. Goes here with a channel bailout marker. All right. Now we swirl again. Skip, skip. Uh, 
skip, control complete, yes. Not much dog fighting that time, which is good. And uh, we're gonna rack up a lot of points there. Let's see what the fate of our pilots is, starting with Bailey. Uh, so, uh, we're in a Spitfire. So he needs a 9 through 12 to land this baby. Oops. 12, look at that. This guy's a champ. What do you mean he's green? He's not green. How about our two fellows in the cockpit fate box? First is green two, oops, which is, oh, we have to remember though, you know what? Uh, and I guess it's appropriate. <laughs> Bailey is gonna suffer a bumpy landing because of our uh, uh, random event that we had. So he's gonna end up in the hospital. All right, so these guys need a tenor higher to land safely. So green two is piloted by uh, Oxspring. He gets a 10, so he lands. And then green three, piloted by Allen. Oh, three, he's on fire. And a six will land him in the hospital. So Alan is in the hospital. Joins Lloyd. Uh, we might as well do it now. Bailey is going to go to the hospital because of his bumpy landing. And then all these guys are fine because they're not in boxes where they need to do a bailout check. So that's going to be it. So our summary, we have, uh, didn't get any escort kills. It's a shame if we could got at least one, that would have been another victory point, but we had, uh, Six bombers killed and seven Keta isolated for a total of 13 points. Uh, we had no one bail out. We had uh, two more wounded and no one killed. Excellent. I'll just make a note that... Uh, We had the bumpy landing. That was Bailey. Uh, I just happened to think of a good tie in for Bailey. Uh, one of my favorite old time uh, radio shows is uh, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The man with the action-packed expense account and the uh, voice actor for that for many of the episodes of that one. My favorite voice actor that played uh, Johnny Dollar was uh, Bob Bailey. Anyway, that wasn't why I chose the name, but now I thought of a good <laughs> who I'll think of him as from now on, I guess. All right, so uh, we've got Alan Bailey, Dean Ellsworth... Uh, Jap, Ox Spring. Actually, Alan's in the hospital, so we don't need to worry about him. Uh, and Bailey. But these two guys are both in the hospital, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, Dean, Jap, Ox Spring, and Rathbone are all fatigued. Let's move them into the fatigued box. Uh, Dean, El 
Shuttlesworth, Jap, uh, Ox Spring, and Rathbone. Those guys are all fatigued, so we want to avoid sending them out if we don't have to. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to send uh, maybe not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. That's clean living right there. Uh, no one, none of our fatigued uh, fighters will need to go out for the next patrol. So we planned that well and got a little bit lucky with uh, our two guys that got hospitalized were ones that were going to be fatigued anyway. So yeah, that's going to wrap it up for patrol number two. We're up to uh, a total of 14 victory points at this point. And if we check on our... Uh, uh, the campaign uh, scoring. <clears throat> uh, we've made it at disaster. I was calling it dismal, but it's a disaster outcome, which is an automatic failure. So we've made it out of the disaster range. So we'll definitely be moving on to uh, chapter two for this campaign. Uh, we're right now in the failure range, but we've only done, we got still got four patrols to go. So uh, looking to try to get an excellent or hopefully at least a success. Because if you get, if you complete the campaign with no disasters and at least one excellent, then it's considered a victory and two successes count as an excellent. So that's what we're striving for. And we'll see. What happens in the next episode for patrol number three? Uh, in the meantime, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you saw any mistakes that I made. Uh, like I said, the only thing I'm a little unsure about is how to resolve that uh, raid vector with the delayed, uh, uh, delayed result uh, that would have then left that uh, spot empty. Uh, but I'll try to get some clarification on that. Hopefully I have an answer for you guys for sure next time. I don't think it really affected things much. I mean, we still had plenty of fuel. Uh, we weren't going to... Yeah, I mean, the only thing... It would have pushed this out further, I guess. So it would have changed a, a few things slightly. But I think overall it would have had a negligible effect. Uh, especially on the points that we scored. It definitely wouldn't have affected that. So... Anyway, I'm done rambling. We'll see you in the next episode.